They say that the Call of Duty community can never come together. I say they are wrong. wrong. Because when they decided to have this King Kong, King Kong bundle, are you guys crazy? When they decided to have this King Kong $80 bundle, that monkey punch, yeah. the Call of Duty community came together and we voiced our opinion by saying that no more. Because let's be real, guys, for that $80, bruh, I can get a real monkey home. I can get a real King Kong home, right? Like the video if you think microtransactions are ruining Call of Duty. Dislike the video if you love those $80 monkey punches. Bruh. But wait for the climax, guys. Roll this. Check Call this. of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was absolutely legendary. If I think to my favorite Call of Duty games, COD 4 is easily the best. All in all, Call of Duty World at War is one of the best COD games out there. I've said this yeah. once and I'll say it again. Nothing will compare to Black Ops 1 or 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, bruh, that's where we at, bro. Modern Warfare, Infinity Tart, or Black Ops 2. But guys, get ready for the climax here. We about to dive right into the main event here, boo-boo. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was released in 2007 to amazingly high ratings and critical acclaim. And it is widely considered by many to be the best game in the entire franchise. This is due to the game's campaign being packed to the brim with amazingly well-written characters, a good narrative, yeah. and a modern setting that bundled it all together. Damn. This was vastly different to campaigns of the previous titles because instead of including three different smaller stories into yeah. one game, COD 4 focused all its campaign into one story. Yeah. We need to and especially for the time, you guys gotta understand that back when it came out, Brad, there was no game on the caliber! And the Sega started like copying it. I remember when like other FPS games were copying in Call of Duty, that's when like Call of Duty was on top. Now Call of Duty copies uh, King Kong, King Kong. Now it's like a King Kong eighty dollar monkey punch. Like, you think it's crazy right now? You think it's crazy? Let me know if you did not buy that bundle. I mean, some people actually bought it. Let's be real, to keep in mind like... that in two thousand seven, a lot of people still weren't connected to the internet, and so yeah. a game single player mode was crucial to its success in the industry. And since Modern Warfare had managed to innovate so drastically compared to its competition with the graphics, characters, and storytelling. It allowed the game to succeed beyond Infinity Ward's wildest dreams. Yeah, However, yeah, what yeah, kept yeah. a lot of players coming back for more was the multiplayer. With the release of Xbox Live and PlayStation Network, the developers Damn. at Infinity Ward saw an opportunity. Infinity Ward then? Uh oh. Uh oh, yeah. Infinity Ward now. Really? <laughs> Where are the lies? Where are the lies, guys? This was Infinity Ward back then. Oh my god, bro. Infinity Ward was so goaded, bro. Like, in fact, like, Treyarch, Infinity Ward, everybody was goaded. Right now, like, uh, Sega's are waiting for Treyarch's new Call of Duty game. And everybody always say, Treyarch is gonna save Call of Duty. Are they really gonna save Call of Duty? Let's, uh, I guess, uh, only time will tell us. And with Halo 3 proving that online multiplayer on console was a viable and thriving subset of gaming, Infinity Ward decided to work extra hard and put a lot of resources into refining the multiplayer experience. Yeah. These refinements included the new create a class system, oh, the introduction yeah. of new game modes, a new progression system that allowed you to unlock the iconic gold camo, the introduction of kill streaks to the franchise, and much, much more. It's pretty clear that Infinity Ward put a lot of effort into the system. The difference yep. between yeah, yeah, COD 4's yeah. multiplayer and COD 3's is astonishing. And this major difference was extremely apparent to fans, leading to the game being praised for many years for its incredible innovations to the series, and it consistently being at the forefront of people's minds when Call of Duty mm -hmm. is brought into the conversation. COD 4 is still put at the top of tier list by most fans today, which is crazy considering it was made all the way back in 2007. I have. I, S, I think S. I have to go S. Yeah, Just S. For it, all the way to God tier. Now, personally, I did not play Call of Duty 4 in its prime. My first Call of Duty was Black Ops 1. I, I know that would be I would be considered like a newbie <laughs> in the like internet uh, internet days or in the OG in the old school Call of Duty player ways or in, in their in their words, right? But but honestly, yeah, Call of Duty 4. I personally would not put it God tier. I would put it more like S or A. I mean, not S either, but I would put it like somewhere around A. Bruh. I know that's a crime. I know that's a crime, but I would put it around A personally. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare is 100% deserving of the God tier status. Um, so COD 4 fair, is fair. next in line there. Uh, COD 4 was really good. Um, it was really good for its time. 
it still is pretty good now, I would say. The next two entries in the series. Yeah, I, I mean, you cannot go wrong with it. Like, S, A, or B, I think that's where you gotta put it realistically, because objectively it was a good game, and still to this day, it's uh, very, very good. But Black Ops 2, I'm a Black Ops 2 kind of guy, bro. These would also manage to innovate massively and see huge success. Call of Duty World at War, while it was another oh, World yeah, War II this game, one too, huh? it managed to bring the new formula to the time period. The multiplayer is praised to this day for being the best World War II multiplayer in the franchise, due to it using the same great mechanics established yeah. in COD 4. The campaign was also really good and <laughs> held up to the high standards that COD 4 Jeez. had set. The campaign had characters like Reznov who would become an important part of future Call of Duty campaigns. It had some truly iconic missions and set Whoa. pieces and the ending of the campaign started what to many is yeah. the most important part of Call of Duty. And the most important thing about zombies was that you could actually, if I'm not mistaken, I, 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 I okay, not entirely sure, but I think you could have paused the game back then, Bruh. right? <laughs> Because nowadays it's like I remember with Call of Duty Van Garbage or Vanguard, my bad. Bruh. Uh, I, when it came out, you couldn't even pause in zombies because they this uh, this is some like bro like technology. Uh, actually, technology is not there. We cannot implement a system to pause. And later on, when fans complain about, hey man, you need to put the pausing button, they were like, okay, here you go, guys. Two hours, you can pause the game for two hours. Back in the days, bro, I could have paused my game till my electricity bill or till I forget. Till I forgot to pay my electricity bill. <laughs> what are we talking about here, man? And now these things are having complications. We don't even get zombie maps no more. So it's like zombies on multiplayer, zombies on Warzone. I mean, bruh, bruh, bruh. I mean, bruh. bruh. The zombies mode. Trust me when I say the zombies mode would become a crucial hallmark of Treyarch's games moving yeah. forward. And it would add a- but, but sadly, they, they forgot and they dick us all down, bro. Ton of replayability to the Call of Duties that had this unique mode. Even World at War, a game released in 2008, is still played today by the Call of Duty Zombies community, Crazy. which goes to show how important this mode was for Treyarch's games. Yeah. Then the introduction of Modern Warfare 2 in 2009 managed to break sales records for the franchise, Insane. bringing even more eyes to the series. Insane, they did like 1 billion that fast. Uh, and I don't think back then anybody was able to do other than Rockstar, I think, right? Yeah, Modern Warfare, uh, we had GTA 4, if I'm not mistaken, back in 2008 right is that correct could be wrong right but i uh, but the thing that sucks so bad about call of duty and activision is that they fail to realize that zombies is such a crucial part and they got so many fans like i'm a zombies fan big time i love multiplayer don't get me wrong but zombies and, and battle royal is one thing right because you can get that experience in PUBG and different uh fortnite different games a lot tried a lot failed but some tried and succeeded Call of Duty succeeded very, very well with Warzone. Yeah, keep doing that, right? Like, I'm not saying don't do it, even though I don't play Warzone. But, like, yeah, keep doing it. But also don't neglect zombies, right? Because zombies is such a big thing about Call of Duty. And, and the craziest part here is that there is no zombie game on the likes. Yeah, there are zombie games, don't get me wrong. But there is no Call of Duty zombies type game, right? So they, they literally are... Is it called, like, Blue Ocean? You ever heard that concept, right? You want to be in a pool where nobody's around because there is no competition there is no competition when it comes down to the formula of call of duty zombies nobody has tried making a game like call of duty zombies right and, and these suckers are just letting that thing go man these sales numbers weren't for no reason either the game's multiplayer was a perfect continuation of the cod 4 formula introducing some of the best and most iconic maps in the franchise having an amazing weapon selection and it built on the game modes laid out by the previous title. Additionally, its campaign did a great job of moving the Modern Warfare story forward, introducing some of the most iconic missions in the entire franchise. Insane, However, bro. after the Insane. release of Modern Warfare 2, uh -oh. another iconic game in the Call of Duty franchise would be released uh -oh. that would take the world by storm. Yeah! Ah! Call of Duty Black Ops 1 released on November 9th, 2010, and this game surpassed what many thought was possible for video games oh at the time. God. Its campaign was insanely good, arguably the best Call of Duty campaign ever created. It introduced iconic characters like Alex Mason and Frank Woods. It was set in the Cold War, which hadn't been done before in a Call of Duty game, and it offered some of the best storytelling in the franchise. The man, the, the menu of this game was a game in itself, dog. There were like Easter eggs. You, it's like, I remember when the first time Suckers found out a way to escape 
from the chair, right? That was mind blowing. I remember like there were <laughs> tutorial videos on YouTube. You could go on the back side and there was like a computer where you have to like enter. You could, there were Easter eggs about it, right? Like you could have like enter codes in it like, 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 like that, right? Like that. Uh, and it was uh, honestly pretty good. Pretty good. I My first Call of Duty game and uh, hands down one of the best, man. The campaign is insane, man. It's insane. Games feats didn't just stop here, though. It also had an amazing New multiplayer that yeah. rivaled that of the Modern Warfare series. Black Ops introduced Creative Class 2.0, more customization to weapons and profiles, wager matches, new kill streaks, oh, yeah. and a whole new weapons arsenal. Back then, wager matches had like Call of Duty points, but the but the type of Call of Duty points that I'm talking about are uh, basically the Call of Duty points were grindable in the game, where you play the game and you earn Call of Duty points, not like uh, you have to buy them to perhaps go ahead and buy yourself a friendly. Now I'm not talking about the BBC bundles uh, here, and I gotta get rid of this uh, one here. Let me actually get this appropriate meme right here. Yeah, that's more appropriate. Bruh. These new features and new content helped to make Black Ops stand out from the crowd, and it led to a huge debate in the community over whether the Black Ops series or Modern Warfare series was superior. But yeah. the addition of the zombies mode oh from World at God. War on top was the icing oh on the God. cake. Even though in 2010, the internet was becoming more and more common, it was still important for games to offer a good offline gameplay experience for its non-internet connected fans to enjoy. Well, a great campaign definitely helped with this, but the zombies mode provided the offline fans a replayable experience. Oh, this is crazy. how I and many others were introduced to the franchise. I didn't Absolutely. have Xbox Live back in the day, and so I would go over to my friend's house and play split screen zombie. And, and the craziest part about this is that when Black Ops 1 Ascension Zombies came out around that time, PlayStation Network was hacked. Oh, shit! For a solid month, for a solid month, Sega's could not play online. You know what kept me around that time? You know what held me down around that time? Call of Duty Zombies, baby. Call of Duty Zombies. <laughs> and yeah, man, I would, I would be playing Kino Der Turan on local, uh, on Ascension. Yeah, local play existed, right? I uh, Yeah, I mean, oh, crazy. Nowadays, every game want to go online only, online only, online only, DRM, 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 DEI, DEI, diversity, equity, inc inclusivity. Every game's trying to be woke as well. Strong, independent, stunning, brave, stunning, brave, stunning, brave. There's a whole lot of drama uh, happening about this stuff as well. Then you got crazy ass microtransactions, games coming out incomplete, season passes dlcs uh i mean dlcs back then kind of matter right nowadays it's like dlc be like one man and twenty dollar thirty dollar bundles uh, skins and all that call of duty i mean they like this thing is crazy eighty dollars microtransaction bro what are we talking about here so obviously gamers and then they turn around and then they say that gamers are toxic they the audacity they have the audacity they have they do all this crap and, they, and then they turn around and say that gamers are toxic, bro. What? What? You think it's crazy? You think it's crazy? This mode allowed for so many new fans to get their hands on the game and to actually have an experience that they could sink hours into. This mm. concept is directly reflected in the ridiculous sales numbers Black Ops reached. That oh being over 30 million copies. This was an insane Shh. record that wouldn't be surpassed for a decent amount of time. This Sheesh. is because the next title in the series, Modern Warfare 3, would be the first game to truly cause some controversy in the yeah. Call of Duty community. Modern Honestly, Warfare I loved it because this was my first Modern Warfare game. I Now I understand like why people hated this. A bit, because like if you play Modern Warfare 2, I mean, I get it though. This, this was an improved version, but still it felt like DLC at the time. I get that. But look at this. Would you rather like today's Call of Duty or this? I'm not talking about graphics. Yeah, graphics nowadays are superior. I do agree. Uh, gameplay is much more smoother. Call of Duty gameplay has always been smoother. You know that I would give them credit where it's due, right? New Call of Duty games, uh, smoothness is a lot more smoother than previous Call of Duty games. Absolutely. Gameplay is a lot more fluid. 60 FPS always, 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 right? Yeah, I gotta give them that. Yeah, today it's like graphics, gameplay, uh, uh, better. It's better. It's better. It's better. It's better. But the rest of, but the content is not there. The content is lacking. The soul is not there the personality is not there dog that's that's where it's at bro it, it feels soulless it feels soulless it, it's a uh, obviously uh, they're after our wallets and it, it's like a money grab it's a cash grab that's how Fair it feels three like. was controversial because it felt like it could have just been a dlc to modern warfare 2. very yeah, little was yeah, changed exactly, on the multiplayer yeah. side of things besides the addition of some new maps and weapons and on the campaign side it was just the conclusion of the already established modern warfare story now don't get me wrong this game was not bad by any means and it's still considered to be one of the best in the series yeah, yeah, and made yeah. some decent improvements as well. 
but a lot of people at the time felt like the game was just not as good as the previous Modern Warfare yep. games due to the lack of innovation. However, the next but... title would turn everything around and ow, would manage to become ow. arguably the best Call of Duty game ever released. Yeah. Black Ops 2 was released on November 12th, 2012, and on release, it was a massive hit, grossing Oof. over $500 million in the first 24 hours yeah. after its release, Duh. meaning that it broke the world record for the biggest entertainment launch in history. And it was the same this record until GTA 5 managed to yeah. surpass it, which yeah. speaks volumes to how good this game really was. This is the game a, yeah. had an amazing campaign that successfully continued the Black Ops storyline, and right now we're hearing that next year, 2025, they are going to have a Black Ops 2 remake. Not remaster, basically means that they're going to have remaster maps from Black Ops 2. And then they're also going to have new maps. That's what we're hearing. But so far, they do not know who's developing it, though. Yay! So, yeah, Sekis definitely want to see Treyarch make it. But what if it's, like, Infinity War that, that's making it? Oh, shit! Oh, shit! You never know, man. They're gonna be adding those BBC bundles after that. Anime bundles, man. Skill best match, baby. Ow, yeah. <laughs> the multiplayer was my favorite in the entire franchise. Facts. And the zombies mode was pretty oh good as God. well. Yeah, there yeah, were yeah. some issues with it, like the fact that Transit is probably the worst zombies map ever released. Not anymore. At that time, I get it. But, but like, looking back, I, I would rather play Transit than playing zombies on multiplayer maps. And I'm not against, like, multiplayer zombie maps. It's just that I, I want, like, zombies crew actual zombie maps and then y'all is gonna have zombies on multiplayer as well as a bonus because sometimes yeah sure like why not right you would love to play it whenever you want to just play it and chill i get that but like back in the days like zombies had its own content its own personality zombies crew zombie i mean look at the hut so simple yet so good the point system they ruined the point system too dog like they ruin everything about it man it, it, it's yeah obviously guys like uh I i'm salty about this dude because i loved it man i want to see it succeed i'm a call of duty fan after all I, I of course i didn't buy modern warfare 3 but but like the reason i didn't buy it was because like it's a cash grab uh, yeah, first Call of Duty, like, I escaped the Matrix, Call of Duty Matrix, rather, I escaped the Call of Duty cycle, but still, I wanna see the game do good, right, like, I wanna, uh, it's like, it's an FPS game, this is the game that I grew up with, like, Call of Duty, Battlefield, GTA, I love, I love me some story games too, but I wanna see it succeed, but it's like, damn, bro, zombies, they did it so dirty, bro, <laughs> so dirty, man. But I think the multiplayer is able to carry it heavily. And clearly a lot of people agree since the game was an insane commercial success. If you ask someone what their first Call of Duty game was, most will either say Black Ops 2 or Black Ops 1, which yeah. goes to show Black how good Treyarch me. knocked it out of the park with these games. Oh, hell However, yeah, hell the release yeah. of Black Ops 2 marked what many considered to be the peak of Call of Duty. Because Yay. after this, Call of Duty would begin committing what I call the three deadly sins of gaming. Those uh -oh. sins being greed, pandering and laziness so strap in because we're about to go deep into the reasons why call of duty's downfall truly began oh no the next release of call of duty would come in the form of call of duty ghost this game was immediately disliked by a large number of fans <laughs> on release this yeah, is because the campaign yeah. was widely criticized for being lackluster especially compared to the previous games it was up against and the multiplayer made sweeping changes like replacing fan favorite game modes with new ones which alienated current fans it also mm. didn't help that the new maps and the side mode extinction were considered to be some of the worst in any game in the franchise yeah. Also, the marketing was notoriously awful with them putting a huge amount of emphasis Fish on the yeah. addition of canines to the series. The Fish only yeah good thing well. this game managed to introduce to the franchise was sliding, which would become a necessity in most COD games moving forward. I would say that Ghost was the beginning of Call of Duty's reputation going downhill. Yeah, but now looking back at it, would you say it's the worst Call of Duty game or still a decent Call of Duty game? With extension, they just needed a round base system. I get it, like at the time people were mad because they were trying to copy like uh, Trex formula and, it, and they did a subpar job at it. I get the mediocre job at it. But, but think about it for uh, for a second, right? If they were to keep that alien extension mode, but added like round based system to it, it would have been better than whatever the crap, whatever crap that we get nowadays, right? It would have been 10 times better. They just needed that. Uh, campaign, I, I don't remember much. I played it. I feel like I liked it. Multiplayer, nah, didn't really like it. But over time, like I, I kind of still enjoyed it, but 
Nah, didn't necessarily at that time didn't like it, but looking back, I feel like I liked it. I could be wrong though. The the thing that that is important to understand here is that Call of Duty Ghost, whether you love it or not, Ghost has a very cult like following. There are a lot of people that like it and fear, but at the time, the reason people really hated it is not that it was a good or a bad game. None of that really matters. It's just that it was an inferior product in comparison to Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 was such a high, bro. It was such a peak and to go from that to call of duty ghost absolute disgraceful so that's where a lot of people were salty and i understand why the terrible reception of this game left a lot of fans with a very pessimistic outlook on what was to come because if ghost was this bad they couldn't imagine what could be just around the corner however uh -oh. despite this game being received horribly by most fans it still sold well and at yeah. least the game was disliked due to its actual mechanics and not any predatory practices laced throughout However, that was all about to change because the next Call of Duty would begin a controversy oh, in the COD community that would last nearly half a decade. Crazy. With T On Martin, November 3rd, a a a a like the supply drops opening, man, that was an era, guys. That was an era, though. Uh, uh, supply drops idea was actually good. Oh, hear me out, hear me out. Listen to the full thing here, okay? The idea is good when you play the game and earn it and you open them organically, right? Then it is truly surprise mechanics in the words of EA. EA, games not included, right? But when they monopolize it, when money gets involved and greed gets involved, that's when the system crumbles. And ultimately, that's what happened. The idea was good, but when money got involved, the execution was ultimately poor. Because what these sons of female dogs did here, cannot curse on YouTube, what, uh, what they did was that these suckers ended up upping or not decreasing the earn rate in the game so it's like harder to earn keys or sometimes not even that you earn the keys the points the call of duty points whatever you want to call it the in-game currency normal rate but if you were to open these supply drops up with your normal like keys points call of duty points whatever you want to call it you wouldn't have the same amount of odds uh, and you wouldn't have the same amount of chances to get that ultimate uh, uh shiny object in the game but if you go ahead and you like open up your wallet and you like uh, show them like the, the power of like maybe like a like a like a washington here let me get a washington here okay i need to put that put that sucker in my bank right now okay if you if you show them this uh, washington right here dog Bruh. they would be like okay let me give you let me give you guys everything let me give you guys everything okay but fast forward to now i mean like, hey, they don't even care about a dollar. They want $20. And this ha this was like a thing like two years ago. Nowadays, they don't even care about $20, guys. They want $80. $80. Soon enough, this is going to become obsolete. They're going to be like, $80 ain't nothing, bruh. They did a $100 thing as well, right? Uh, b basically, you have to spend $100 and then you would get a skin. It's not necessarily like you got to like purchase it. It's more, but but still the 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 idea behind is just absolute dog crap, bro. It's dog water. So soon enough, eighty dollars is gonna become obsolete. Like when does it stop? It's like holy crap, eighty dollars. It's more expensive than the actual game. But you cannot buy it, bro. You cannot. Yeah, fair. But you guys gotta understand that they are prioritizing all of this over the content that they can have in the game because they're putting time into developing this you buy the game think about it this okay you buy the game for 70 dollars full price game and then all the new content that's kind of good and decent it gets thrown behind a paywall like this i'm not saying that there are no maps yeah they drop maps but guys think about it like it's so little content one map after a couple of months like what we talking though it's not nearly as much as like getting skins like that every single week or now i, I feel like that they drop more than uh, twice in a week or multiple of them per week Could 2014 be wrong, call of duty advanced warfare was released upon arrival it was immediately apparent that the game had some massive flaws a lot of people didn't enjoy the multiplayer due to it being an advanced movement game the skill gap was huge which led to a lot of casual fans of the franchise not enjoying it as much yeah, yeah. the game was also criticized for having an all over the place map design some maps were designed well for the advanced movement, and then others felt like you could get away without using the movement at all. Additionally, the campaign was so bad that it was memed across the internet. I'm sure we all know of <laughs> yeah. the F to pay respects meme. Yeah, that started in Advanced Warfare. 
And on top of it uh -oh. all, the game didn't even satisfy Zombies fans due to the game's core mechanics, like the new Pack-a-Punch system. But, but would you rather, like, Advanced Warfare? No, I know at the time it was bad, but looking back, I think... Uh... I rather advan advance warfare 2 than van garbage not talking about like vanguard uh, gameplay I, I heard the gameplay was actually decent and i played the beta and well, i also bought the game sadly uh, regretted later on this is why i did not purchase modern warfare 3 2023 right but for the uh, for the time yeah i understand but looking back i mean uh, advanced warfare zombies wasn't that that bad guys see our standards are plummeting as we go forward them and emp zombies feeling awful to play with However, the game's main issue is its monetization. Yeah, Around this time, Call of Duty went through a phase spanning a five-year period that I like to call the phase of greed. Not only was Activision charging $60 for each base launch title and an additional $60 for all the DLCs, but they also introduced the worst mechanic ever added to the COD franchise. That being supply drops. Supply drops, in case you were unaware, were basically in-game slot machines that allowed you to gamble in-game currency yeah. and real-life money for your chance to win in-game items. And Advanced Warfare's rendition of these drops were extremely predatory. Advanced Warfare supply drops were filled to the brim with cosmetics and, more importantly, weapon variants and new yeah. DLC weapons. This Crazy. basically meant that if you got lucky inside a supply drop, you would have a competitive advantage over everyone else who didn't open loot boxes. These loot boxes were optional either. If you wanted a new DLC weapon, you had to grind through the challenges to unlock supply drops, or you had to drop real world cash to open them up. So basically, Activision was introducing gambling to their largely underage audience that had massive gameplay advantages available inside them. Mm. And this, uh, and by and no they... means, was just a one-time thing. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 had them and they had uh court battles with that too right basically ea during court they were like nah bro it's not gambling it's not gambling there was a chick that they brought in right that said that it's surprise mechanics our audience loves it she says some bull squash like that but i remember her saying that it's surprise mechanics yeah and, and arguably worse infinite warfare had them call of duty world war ii had them <laughs> and black ops 4 yeah. had them as well and coincidentally, this period of Call of Duty is widely considered to be one of the worst time periods of the franchise. And the next entry that was about to release, Black Ops 3, wouldn't be able to turn things around in the slightest. Uh, honestly, Black Ops 3 was the last, uh, I, I would say the best futuristic game, minus uh, obviously the, 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 the loot boxes and microtransactions, Bull Squash. Zombies, amazing. Multiplayer, I loved it though. I, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, obviously, everybody's different. Some of you probably hate it and that's fine. But for me, I loved it. And uh, 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 feedback across the, the board was like, hey, game's good. It's fun. Campaign sucks, of course. And microtransactions and supply drops sucks ass. Absolutely. But outside of that, it was pretty... It was viewed November very 6, 2015 marked the release of Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And it was immediately one of the most divisive in the franchise. A large amount of people love it, a lot of people hate it, and even more people just completely skipped out on the game due to Activision's reputation at the time. And you can't really blame them either. Black Ops 3's campaign was abysmal, and its yeah. multiplayer was mixed when it came to reception. Yeah. I personally really liked the campaign, yeah. but I know a lot of people hated the advanced movement. Uh, he meant to say multiplayer. I th he meant to say multiplayer. Direction of the franchise. Also, the multiplayer did have a real monetization problem, just like all the other games of this era. Following the example Advanced Warfare set, all of the DLC weapons in Black Ops 3 were- Oh man, yeah, you got the homie Elliot here, bro. Man, he had that music like- <laughs> He had like some uh, yeah intro music. I'm I'm not sure if he still does it. Uh, I I think he's on a reaction channel. Like he watches like meme videos. I think right. Uh, and on main channel he does Fortnite. Man, like times like crazy times. Man, I remember like I got into uh, doing Call of Duty YouTube because of Ali and Timor. Because before that, I was making like real life videos. I was truly inspired off of Freddy W, Freddy Wong, and Smosh. Uh, back in the days, I was making like real life videos, GoPro mounted on camera, uh, and, and running around, running around, and making like in real life Battlefield, in real life Call of Duty videos. Till one day, cops came and confiscated my my airsoft. Yay! Because I'm in Canada, that happens here. So yeah, that happened, and I was like, oh well, shit. Like, now I gotta make... <laughs> what videos can I make? Okay, then I got introduced to Ali T. Martin and started making, like, those uh, uh, gaming, gaming videos, man.
were locked behind the newly introduced supply drops. And people would have to spend thousands of dollars to even think about obtaining these pieces of new content. Insane. The only thing saving the game was its amazing zombies, zombies mode, which yeah. was comprised of the best maps of the franchise and an absolutely, absolutely. amazing cast of characters. Whew. This mode was so good that it would be played by fans for years to come. And its yeah. modding and map making community is still going strong today, absolutely. nearly eight years later. However, this excellent zombies mode wasn't good enough to stop the huge amount of criticism Call of Duty was receiving at the time. And the next game will just keep making things worse. Infinite the announcement Warfare? of Infinite Warfare oh, in 2016 yeah. took the franchise to a steep decline by becoming the <laughs> most disliked trailer on YouTube at the time. The oh, announcement man, was received no. so poorly by the public that Activision decided to tack on a remastered version of COD 4 to the deluxe edition of Infinite Warfare to get more sales. If I'm not mistaken, right? Like even the first first trailer, because back, uh, people were assuming like, where's the trailer, man? When is the next Call of Duty coming out? When is the next Call of Duty? I remember I was excited too. But then trailer drops and it's like, oh, bruh. But I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, in the, okay, yeah, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm like trying to go back in time. And yeah, the first trailer, towards the end, they did tease Modern Warfare Remaster. And then reports came out, like Activision was not satisfied with it. And, and deep down, they knew that, it wouldn't be received well by the fans because of the previous track record of advanced warfare being futuristic black ops 3 multiplayer being futuristic so they realized like okay this time oh man we we, we we cannot stop the development because infinity ward has been working on the game for like two years now okay it's all full steam ahead go and uh they pulled out a modern warfare remaster alongside it and suckers so, ended up buying I, I if i'm not mistaken infinite warfare still sold really well man and it it, and it beat battlefield one because battlefield one came out at the time and it was considered like really really good i love battlefield one a lot of people love it because it was such a good game a and b it came out at the right time because everybody was like futuristic the future the future the future and those suckers at DICE and EA, they were like, nah, son, we're going back to the babushka this, okay? We're going to the babushka this. It's going to be very, very good. We're going to be shooting. Bing, bing, bang, ba bing, 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 boom. And they came out and suckers loved it, bro. Suckers loved it. And the bad reception wasn't for nothing. People absolutely hated the multiplayer in this game due to its overpowered specialist system and the terrible maps that were clearly not designed with advanced movement in mind. Also, the game's multiplayer, once again, followed the greedy tactics of locking DLC weapons behind supply drops which would become a common criticism mm. then for the campaign it just kind of went under people's radar due to the last three campaigns in the franchise being terrible and the zombies mode wouldn't be given the light of day until years after its release to this day when you ask the average cod fan what their least favorite call of duty game was many will say infinite warfare due to its numerous flaws yeah However, understandably i also think this game was a victim of timing the last two Call of Duties were set in the far future with advanced movement mechanics. A lot of people were skeptical of this new direction for the series. And since Infinite Warfare was the third game like this in a row, a lot of the player base wanted to make it known that COD should go back to its roots with a modern boots on the ground shooter. However, Call of Duty wouldn't truly get this message until a few years after. This World is apparent II. because the yeah. next Call of Duty in the series was World War II. World War II was mainly criticized for being another game in a time period that was overused, yeah. instead of being a game set in the modern day. People just didn't like going to this setting for the fourth. Yeah, like World War II honestly was a lackluster game at the time. Yeah, not even talking about the setting. The setting is our main thing. It's like the setting was so overdone. And I believe, yeah, Battlefield 5 also tried to do. Yeah, Battlefield 1 succeeded, but Battlefield 5, it's like they do the same old thing. Uh, Babushka setting, WW2 setting, right? People are tired of it. And on top, they also, it was like one of the first a big game that was introducing like the woke stuff but that was not even that bad in comparison to the crap that is coming in games right now stunning brave but obviously i'm not justifying it because like they added like a female character with like uh prosthetics and all that crap uh, insane because like it goes completely against the history right it's just they we we saw the, it was forced diversity force uh uh input there and a lot of people were like nah bro like cut the cap but but still like in comparison 
then versus now, it's like now it's absolutely insane, bro. It's absolutely insane. Like you guys want to know what they're doing? You probably have seen it. This is what they're doing right now with the with the female characters, bro. Like this is not a female, bro. This is a man dressed up as a female. So these guys are really, really <laughs> doing it. They are. <laughs> Microsoft is saying to Xbox devs and the team, bro. Like, do not make curvy female characters. Don't, don't make it. Don't make it. Eve from Stellar Blade showstopper and, and ign employee comes out said that now nah, bro if you play this game you're gonna end up beating your wife up bruh uh that females are gonna self delete if they look at eve and they play it's like holy crap what are we talking about right so th this is where we at but i believe battlefield 5 was like the first game that was considered first biggest game i should say that was considered going woke but it wasn't even that bad in comparison to now, you know, it was bad for the time. Don't get me wrong But comparison to now sheesh man like we're just so far gone right now of time and it didn't help that the title made a lot of changes like the addition of score streaks the removal of sliding from the game and the addition of the division system which was hated by many multiplayer fans then for the zombies mode it was so different from previous modes in the so series too, yeah. that it scared a lot of people away to this day <laughs> world war ii is considered to have one of the worst zombies modes yeah due to it being more horror focused then finally for the campaign once again it isn't really it wasn't even about the horror it was about the repetitiveness of the horror that it's that fans didn't like in the beginning yeah cool it's good it's good for novelty sakes but it's like the same thing over and over the same you feel what i'm saying and after after a while it just it, it, it becomes bland because there is not enough quality content to hold the player base over really talked about much the series at the time was producing the bare minimum when it came to the campaign side of things so many just didn't care about the mode entirely which activision would try to use to their advantage in the next title black ops, black ops 4. 4 which was yeah, another yeah, yeah. absolute disaster the game's <laughs> multiplayer was absolutely ripped apart for its heavy reliance on teamwork mechanics making it feel more like overwatch rather than call of duty but yep. that wasn't the main issue with the game firstly the game launched without a campaign at all since Activision believed it wasn't important anymore, which made a lot of fans who lacked an internet connection irritated that this mode wasn't a gameplay option for them. Also, it made a lot of people wonder why the game even had the Black Ops name in the first place, mm. since there was nothing tying Black Ops 4 to the rest of the series. I will say they did replace Black the campaign with the new Battle Royale mode Blackout, but this mode would quickly die after Warzone came out, and it wasn't up. Black Ops should have been free, honestly. They should have upgraded uh, the graphics and the engine. Uh, and it should have been free it would have succeeded a lot more blackout was loved a lot and, and personally i'm the type of guy now listen i absolutely would want a uh, campaign absolutely so i'm not coming uh, i'm not saying that i don't want it i absolutely want it but but still like with black ops 4 it's like the campaign we, we heard reports that they tried to make the campaign two times they made it they were making it then they had to cancel it because they didn't like the direction or whatever. I'm not sure of what happened, but we were getting stories. Then they tried to redo it, and then they had to ultimately cancel that, and they were running out of time. They, they had like a year left to make everything work, zombies, multiplayer, and another mode. That, and Fortnite was killing it at the time. We're talking like 2017, 2018, right? Black Ops 4 came out in 2018, yeah. So 2017, 2018, Black, Fortnite was just shooting up it was killing it they come out with they came out with blackout so they had to put that together very very fast and david wonder did an amazing job on it uh and for the time uh for the amount of time that went into it it was so little in comparison to uh what they usually i believe it, they made it under in, in less than a year and it was uh for that time very very good actually updated that often and since it wasn't free to play like warzone many call of duty fans have never even played the mode Maybe if they made Blackout free to play instead of charging $60 for it, people would have actually ended up playing it. Mm, but maybe. since yeah. it was bundled into Black Ops 4, it was pretty much dead on arrival. Then finally, the Zombies mode was heavily criticized by fans for being way too complex and making unnecessary changes to the core mechanics that wasn't necessary. Some it, wasn't, it wasn't complex. Uh, I, I understand it could uh, perhaps come that way to somebody that's like a casual player, absolutely. But as somebody that has been playing Zombies for years and years, wasn't complex. I would say it wasn't even complex at all. <laughs> It's just it's just that the 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 HUD, the hit marker, little things like that, juggernaut, why even change the perks, bruh? Why? Why? The point system. Why y'all suckers wanna mess with the point system? Just why? 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 Why?
I, that wasn't even any, there nothing wrong with that. We just wanted more maps and good maps, and Yalsikas did that. Four maps, but not all of them were quality. Nine map was, uh, I remember, Voyage of Despair, this is Titanic map. Sakas thought that this was gonna be the best map, ends up being the worst map of all time. That's how it was viewed at the time, right? Nine, the daytime map, people were like, it's gonna be the worst map. Guess what? Turns out to be the best goddamn map on Black Ops 4. Uh, so, and Mob of the Dead was uh, Mob of the Dead, Blood of the Dead, rather. They remade it completely, right? Remaster, remade it. Uh, and that was good, that was good. Classified, Season Pass map, that was also viewed good. It, it's just that there was a whole lot of uh, visual crap on the screen that was such a massive turnoff. And they also released it a month early because Red Dead Redemption 2 was coming out, Rockstar Games were talking, right? I wonder what's gonna happen when GTA 6 come out. This thing is gonna drop it like two, three months early though. Uh, but, but yeah, so they had to drop it a month early. Game was not ready to launch, uh, games crashing, blue screens, so there was whole lot of crap but ultimately that would be fixed but what was not fixed is the content is the actual maps once a shit map always a shit map that's what happened with zombies examples are reworking the pack and punch system the perk system and removing gobble gums after making the best zombies game ever black ops 3 many people had high expectations for this game yeah, yeah. And since it drifted so far away from what made black ops 3 so great it left many fans heavily disappointed. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice a lot of these games, especially Black Ops 4 and World War II, felt the need to change core mechanics for no rhyme or reason, other than to make the game easier for newer players. Changes like the implementation of score streaks, heavy skill-based matchmaking, and terrible balancing changes made it easy for new players to stay in their own little bubble away from the rest of the world. And as time has gone on, these sort of problems have become more and more problematic. I think the release of Modern Warfare 2019 and Warzone are a great example of what I'm talking about. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Modern Warfare 2019 was widely considered by many to be a step in the right direction for the series. The new movement mechanics created a lot of depth in the gameplay that otherwise wasn't there before, and the new weapon customization made for a lot of unique class setups that you could take advantage of. This inherently made the skill gap much higher and more difficult to climb compared to a game like World War II, which handheld the player throughout the entire process. And while there were definitely some issues with 2019, like the fact that the maps rewarded camping and that the skill-based matchmaking was still a heavy issue in the community, it yeah. was a step in the right direction in a lot of people's eyes. And with the addition of Warzone into the mix, Call of Duty was now competing with some of the biggest games out there, like Fortnite. And seeing yeah. player this game definitely revived Call of Duty, absolutely, but the biggest uh, negative factors about this was that survival co-op mode, bad. You, you know, uh, skill-based matching and ramped up to 11, six we're playing like their life depends on it, yeah. And, and there's a uh, camping, yeah, camping was insane in this game, everyone was camping in this game. The it's not even like the player's fault. I wouldn't even say like, yeah, people were camping, obviously. I w uh, but but in this case, the the way they designed the map and they purposely designed the map, safe spaces. You remember that? They were coming out and they were saying that, yeah, we, we need safe spaces, safe spaces for new players. So they purposely tried to slow down the gameplay and that's, that was the biggest negative. Other, other than that, the game was actually pretty good. Their counts, unlike anything they had ever seen before. Warzone would actually become the main source of income for Activision for many years, and especially to start. People were absolutely in love with this thing. The great movement of Modern Warfare 2019, the slow time to kill, and the large weapon pool made for some absolutely great fun. Also, yeah. Warzone had the unique benefit of being free to play, which caused it to have a reach unlike Call of Duty ever had. This yep, insane yeah, ability yeah. to reach newer players would be used to Activision advantage to sell future Call of Duty games by integrating them into Warzone. Black Ops Crazy. Cold War was the first game after 2019 to truly take advantage of this, allowing the game to amass over 30 million copies sold, matching iconic games like Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2. And it was actually received positively overall due to its mechanics going back to the series roots, allowing for the multiplayer to absolutely thrive. Also, its Zombies mode did a great job of appealing to the mass number of casual fans Fans, joining through the huge growth of Warzone. All yeah. of this made a lot of long-term fans hopeful that Call of Duty might actually be able to turn itself around and potentially save itself from the death most people foresaw coming just a few years ago. However, the next three iterations Ow. in the series would disappoint the community once Van again Garbage because Activision that, right? would commit the final sin, laziness. <laughs> 
Oh, Call of Duty no. Vanguard was released on November 5th, 2021. Yeah. And this game, in my opinion, was the final nail in the coffin that has sealed the series' fate in the eyes of the public. This yeah. game was clearly rushed out the door to meet deadlines. This is because the campaign was one of the shortest in the franchise. It had terrible characters and it- Uh, you think this was the shortest? Who's gonna tell him about Modern Warfare 3 2023? Those things actually took Warzone- Warzone? It, they, they, they put missions on Warzone though. Bruh. You, you feel what I'm saying? Remaster maps for multiplayer. I mean, uh, yeah, the remaster maps are from, are from Modern Warfare 2009. The maps are good, but it's just that Hey, oh, you suckers are saying it's a new game. Where are the new maps? You right? Like, holy shit, man. $70 they charge full price. Had it been, had it been, had it been, it was $30. Okay, fair. But now, nah, bro, the audacity. And after that, like, we'd be getting like these bundles as well. It's chalk, dog. It lacked any iconic missions. Then on top of that, Treyarch was forced to be brought on to develop the zombies so they Always. could release it on time. <laughs> Meaning that Always. two studios were having to work on a single game at once. And don't get me started on the ridiculous number of controversies surrounding the game. The biggest one being the fact that the game did not stay true to the time period at all. If you want to watch a video breaking down every flaw with Vanguard when it comes to his- Guys, check out this video on the screen. You want to know like who recently was caught cheating in Call of Duty? Yeah, that scene is also chalked right now. Check this video out, and I will see you right there. On the left, that video is on my second channel, though. Yeah, second channel, guys. Second channel, always coming in clutch. Check it out, and I'll see you right there.